Hey guys, uh, long time no video here. So, right now this is what we got going on at this uh, store I'm at, grocery store. We got a uh, System 20 walk-in cooler deli running warm and walk-in bakery cooler running warm. This system uh, runs both of those coolers. So I'm gonna, it's a little uh, remote system up on the roof. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and also this unit, these two systems are on complete opposite ends of the store. So if you know how a grocery store is set up, you got a bakery on one corner and a service deli on the other corner. So, yep, so let's take it apart and see what's going on. All right, I took the cover off, man. This thing looks like a mess in here. So I got the sun behind me, so that's why you see my shadow in there. Anyways, uh, yeah, this thing is just not running at all. Hasn't been running for a little while. Got some extra parts, I guess. Sight glass. Dryer was changed out back on the 8, what, 9, 29, 2018. Dual pressure control, manual reset. Uh, got a hand valve on the liquid side going over to the case downstairs. So if you want to pump the system down, you turn that off. It starts pumping it into the receiver, um, which is actually right here. I thought it was underneath, but it's actually right here. Uh, small receiver, got two condenser fan motors. Again, this is only an air-cooled condenser on the roof. Out here in the Coachella Valley, it gets about 117, 120 at some, some points. So these units struggle pretty good in the summertime. Right now, it's not too bad. So I'm gonna dig into the electrical, see exactly why it shut down, and then we'll get back to you. Okay, so went ahead and took my dual pressure control cover off and normally when I see I walk up to a compressor and nothing's running I immediately go for the electrical so I go for the control circuit first um, but and it, it all depends sometimes I'll go for the main electrical to see if I actually have power coming up to the unit which was here um, which I do and um, and then from there, I'll start going all over to my safeties, like my um, my dual pressure control. Uh, this one does not have an oil fail. It's a self-contained oil just comes back to the compressor. Um, so I really don't have any other safeties other than this dual pressure control. So I took it off. And I put my leads across. And then hear that? I got voltage. So immediately that's telling me that it's open. Now what is it open on? Is it open on low pressure or is it open on high pressure? There's only one way to find out, right? Now if we put gauges on here, we can easily tell. But I'm kind of lazy right now. Yep, see look at that. So I'm probably off on low pressure. See that started up. So, we know it's off on low pressure. Now, it could be a couple things. It could be obviously low on gas. That's the first thing everybody wants to jump to. But there could be a solenoid, a main solenoid that will pump it down and that could be bad. So it could actually pump down the entire system and um, go off on low pressure as well. So, with that said, let's go ahead and find out if there's any other solenoids on this system other than the ones that are on the units itself. Now, if they are on the, the boxes themselves, the walk-ins, that still wouldn't pump down. If one went bad, one solenoid went bad, that still wouldn't pump down this entire system. It would only pump down that one walk-in. So my guess that is, is it is actually low on gas before I go down there, we're going to just go ahead and put our gauges on there before I start walking around and doing for no reason. We'll put gauges on there. That'll tell me immediately if I'm low on gas. All right, I got my gauges on here. So that's my low side. I am 
closing it down, opening up to let pressure come in. Right now, I got like maybe two PSI. So that's on my low side, so could be pumped down still. I don't know if you can see any good. I'll try to get that sun glare. So we're gonna open down my high side. Right here. And that thing didn't even move. I am completely flat on gas. So, well, we got a huge leak. This thing takes 134A, they retrofit this to 134A not that long ago. Well, that's not good. But the big leak, so now I gotta go get my nitrogen, pump this guy up with nitrogen and find out where exactly where that leak is. You know, it could be in the obvious places. Look at all this nastiness here. Could have got rubbed out. But I really don't see any big signs of oil. I don't even know if I have oil in my compressor. We probably lost it all. I'll have to check that out. So, yeah. Time to get the nitrogen out. Pump this thing up and see what it could do. Let me unplug it since we don't need it running on a vacuum. Okay, so this is what I got going on. It started to get hot on me up here. So I had to bring out my canopy. I got my nitrogen. Got it hooked into my receiver. Right now I'm pumping, I pumped it up to about, what's that, 75 pounds. I wanna go see if I can hear something. I kinda wanna bring it up to about at least 100. That way I can really hear something, but if I don't hear anything with this, then um, I'll bump it up even higher. So I'm gonna head downstairs. I don't hear nothing up here. So normally if there was a leak up here, you would see for one, you would see all the oil everywhere. Uh, and then two, you would hear the leak with this much pressure. So I don't hear nothing up here. Um, I'll go downstairs, see if I hear anything down there. And if not, then I gotta throw a tracer or gas or refrigerant through here just so I can try to leak check it and get something that way. All right, let's head downstairs. All right, so I came down to get my vacuum pump. I'm gonna take the oil out. Um, they say you gotta change the oil out like, like every other job, every job. I try to do it as often as I can. So that's all I'm gonna do is just drain the oil on this one, add some new oil, get it to my level, which it is level now, but it's a little dirty. So I'm gonna give it to, and then once I find this leak, go ahead and, all right, right now I'm getting my ladder too. So that's why I'm out here. So I might as well get my vacuum pump because I know it's a flat, so it's gonna need to be vacuumed out. Then I gotta pick up a liquid line dryer and get one of those in there too before I put it in a vacuum. Okay, so this is what I found when I opened it up. This is on the bakery evaporator coil. Um, check this out. You can even hear it. I haven't really pinpointed it yet. I'm just spraying all around until I hear a difference. There it is. Look at that. People say trader caps are not the root cause, but check that one out. I bet you anything, there's no Schrader core in there or the Schrader core actually blew out, which is very rare. I haven't seen seen that especially on the suction side could be on the weld but everything looks like it's coming out of that Schrader cap that's a big leak too I got it only pumped up to 75 pounds so yeah things aren't even on all the way I bet you anything there's no Schrader cap in here or Schrader core if I if I were to take that all the way off Man, it was in a big mess, so. 
if that's the case this is a pretty easy fix but um i'm gonna go ahead and let the rest of the nitrogen out and then come and check this out all right gotta change this dryer so hopefully the camera position will work pretty good yeah, I don't have that set up yet, so we'll see what happens. Try to put some flare fittings on. This sort of be easier. I know I, I sweat everything in usually, but you know we're dealing with this older system up on the roof. I just prefer something a little bit more easier to change out on this particular one. do it different but I like to start from the bottom and work my way around instead of running towards it. ahead and let it cool down Should throw a rag on there brass tends to hold the heat a lot right there so I'll cool that down and then we'll go ahead and um 
put the dryer on. So 164C or F C164 flare. So put that on. And then um, throw it in a vacuum. All right, guys, sorry about that. My phone overheated, um, got hot on me. So once my phone cooled down, I ended up completing the whole job, cleaning up. And um, so now you see is the finished result. So what I did was after I installed the dryer, and by the way, the dryer, um, always date your parts, your new parts, to make sure that uh, the other guy that's gonna come behind you will see when it was replaced. Um, and that's what I always say, is date all your new parts. And then um, I didn't change out the side glass because it's still good, it's in good shape, you can see through it. So, other than it looks old, okay? So that's why I didn't change it out, because it's still good. Um, so after I put the dryer in, I went downstairs and I, um, before I put it in the vacuum and pressure checked it, I went down to go take a look at that straighter and I opened up the cap and it was blown out. Um, I threw the video in there before um, a small little clip of it already. So you probably already seen that. That was a straighter that was blown out. So what I did was I replaced it and uh, there it goes it started right now so i replaced it and i put the new cap on there fixed that lead pressure checked everything and then i pressurized it with nitrogen the entire system everything was tight there was no other leaks found so i went ahead and uh, threw it in the vacuum and then i charged it with uh 134a which is what that's calling for and that's pretty much it. Everything's good. So, uh, sorry for the late video again, but uh, that's it, man. Uh, I will see you guys on the next service call. So, like, share, subscribe, and again, I'll see you on the next service call. Thanks.